Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Graham Budd Table of Quality. Uh, and welcome to a podcast today about our up and coming vinyl auction, which is coming thick and fast. Uh, October the 18th is the big day, uh, and we're already getting to the point where uh, we're exceeding our own expectations on some of the absolutely amazing artifacts and pieces that we've been able to consign, uh, ready to put on auction for you people out there. Uh, today I've been asked to put together something like a, a greatest hits table, if we're gonna use a vinyl term or a pop culture term. And it's really, really difficult. Uh, none of us really knew when we set on this wonderful journey, just what we get brought to us or offered to us to put uh, in our auction. And uh, we never cease to be amazed. Um, if anybody would have asked me a year ago when we first started talking about this, what did I really, really want to see? Well, I'm a huge Beatles fan. Uh, I live, eat and breathe the Beatles. No matter what music I'm into, no matter what I'm listening to, I honestly think that the root of everything is Lennon, McCartney, Harrison and Starr. They're so important. Uh, and I'm delighted that we've been able to bring to the auction for our first time and hopefully not the last, all four Beatles autographs on one piece of paper. Uh, and with a wonderful, wonderful story as well. Uh, the Beatles played six consecutive nights uh, in Western Super Mare at the Odeon Cinema uh, back in 1963, July 1963. Now just imagine that for a moment. The biggest band ever this world's produced getting towards the real start of Beatlemania absolutely exploding playing six nights at a cinema in Western Super Mare. Incredible. Supported by uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers, another Mersey Beat band at that point. Uh, the vendor, sadly, was laid up in bed with chicken pox and her sister worked as an usherette at the Odeon Cinema. So we believe on the 23rd, which was the second night, to cheer her sister up, she got a piece of paper after the her gig and she asked the Fab for to autograph it for her, which they duly did in pen. Um, interestingly, she managed to recover herself and get to the centre last night to actually see the band herself, which is lovely. Uh, they have a certificate of authentication with them, uh, all signed in pen, uh, with the Beatles written at the top. Uh, we've got a, an estimate on that of between four to six thousand uh, pounds and what a great way to own something genuinely held and signed by the greatest band that's ever stalked this planet wonderful wonderful thing which brings me on to other bands and musicians which change the world forever now this battered little drumstick here was one of the sticks or a stick often of a pair of course uh, used by arguably one of the most influential drummers ever, playing a very, very early gig for arguably one of the greatest and most creative bands of the late 60s. Now, what do you do when you get the best musicians in their field at that time and put them together in one band? What name do you give them? Well, it's often been said that the name Cream referred to the fact that Eric Clapton, Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker were the absolute cream of the crop in their chosen industry guitar, bass, and drums. Clapton, he'd forged a career, starting out with the Yardbirds, very, very short spell with John Mayles Blues Breakers, and then he was looking for something more authentic and blues to really, really immerse himself in. Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce, they play for the, Jack, uh, the Graham Bond organization. Amongst other bands, Jack Bruce had played in Manfred Mann as well for a while. But they be, were drawn together really to do something a bit different, a bit special. So the cream was born. Uh, this drumstick, which is actually printed and embossed with Ginger Baker's name on it, uh, was caught by the vendor at one of Cream's earliest gigs. 1966, a club called the Ricky Tick. And I doubt even then that anybody could have imagined that a small provincial club watching these three great musicians play, that Cream would have such a lasting example and influence over music to this very, very day. Uh, so this is just about the time that the first Cream Fresh album, the first Cream album came out. Uh, and of course, on the route to the classic, which is known as Israeli Gears. Uh, again, that comes from the vendor, being in a possession since the night of the gig. Uh, we put a reserve of four to 600 pounds for this piece of absolute rock and roll history. So again, a fascinating piece. What do beans mean? Well, sometimes it can mean Heinz. But on this occasion, they mean Christy Burr. Uh, 
Now it seems strange that we talk about the Beatles, we talk about Ginger Baker, one of the greatest drummers of all time, and then some of you, you wouldn't put in the same rock music bracket as that, Christy Burr. Yet the Irishman has sold millions and millions of albums and has a following so loyal it's untrue. Um, we've been fortunate to consign to our next auction an unbelievable amount of exclusive Christy Burr tour and recording memorabilia uh, from one of our clients who's been a member of Christy Burr's entourage for over a quarter of a century. Uh, there's some fabulous signed concert posters, tour itineraries, uh, there's flyers, there's VIP passes. We've got absolutely everything for the true Christy Burr fan to, pur to purchase something unusual, to purchase something different, and to purchase something which is signed a lot of the time. There's so much signed merchandise in there. This, well, our, uh, our vendor was known for his love whilst abroad of Heinz Baked Beans. He didn't like the foreign variety. So everywhere they went, Heinz Baked Beans did go. And it was such a standing joke with the touring crew that Christy Burr and the band specially signed him his own tin of beans uh, about 15 years ago out on tour. So I'm sorry they're out of date, you can't eat them. Uh, but it's a fascinating, unusual, very, very humorous, if you will, piece of Christopher memorabilia. But just like that, whet your appetite. That could be the starting course for the incredible stuff that we've actually got lined up to auction for you in uh, October. So when the catalogue comes online, please make sure if you're a DeBerr fan, you have a look because you'll be amazed and you'll be delighted. Who's the most important artist of them all? We said the Beatles, haven't we? On this table, we've probably got two of the greatest. To me, I still can't believe there's no David Bowie left walking this planet. All my years of being into music and listening to music, the man who's changed, created styles and led the way was always Bowie. And the fact he's not with us anymore, I just find incredible. Here is one of four, uh, sorry, album covers signed in person by Bowie 1978 at a series of concerts at the Bingley Halls in Staffordshire. Uh, our vendor at the time was working as a student on security. Imagine that, it's not a bad gig to get, is it, for a student? Uh, and they were allowed to take four pieces of merchandise into the dressing rooms after the concerts for the great man to sign. Uh, so our vendor took with him, in my opinion, Bowie's greatest album, which is why I've got it here with me. The Imperious Hunky Dory, what an album. He took in with him Aladdin Sane, which could also be argued to be a bit good. Uh, a copy of Low, which I think is also brilliant. And Changes One. God, why didn't you take uh, Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust? Ah! But it was authenticated by uh, the Bowie Fan Club. Uh, they were shown on the Bowie Fan Club site. Uh, their original pressing, so they're actually the first pressing of the albums as well, signed in blue pen by the Chameleon of Pop. Uh, there are four opportunities to own a piece of history in that respect, and we put a valuation on them between eight and 1,200 pounds each. Superb. Now then, not for the easily offended. One of the most infamous record covers of all time, and one of the greatest rock albums of them all, in my opinion. The Jimi Hendrix Experience. Three studio albums, that's all, incredible. Yet Hendrix's influence in the four years or five years he was recording till his untimely death, the age of 27 in 1970, is just incredible. This album, to me, is his watermark. It came out in 1968, one of the few double albums around at that time, issued on Track Records, the label owned by the management team of The Who. Um, I've owned several copies of this myself. Very, very controversial cover, which Hendrix himself didn't like. He didn't approve of the nudity on it. But it's one of the best copies I've ever seen. It's not quite the first one. If you know your Hendrix, you'll know that the first pressings of Electric Ladyland had purple text. This one's got white text, but hey, that's really, really early. Incredible to think. I don't think that's been played more than once. There's some laminate creases on the cover, uh, but the vinyl is in absolute pristine condition, as are the uh, original inner dust sleeves. So a wonderful, wonderful thing. The best copy I've ever seen personally of that wonderful album, and we put a reserve on that one, or an estimate, should I say, of six to 800 pounds. Fantastic copy, you'll not find better. Gonna move on to the side now. You think of people who've had a crashing influence in more than one, shall we say, genre or era. David Such found his way on the early rock and roll scene from the coffee bars of the early 60s uh, and went out on the road as screaming Lord Such. 
and some of the musicians who played in the backing bands for Lord Such were truly incredible. Uh, there was an album called Screaming Lord Such and His Heavy Friends and you've got people playing on that such as John Bonham of Led Zeppelin fame, Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin, Richie Blackmore, just incredible people all backing this wonderful and very very unique artist. Jack the Ripper, an incredible video but of course he also had an amazing career in politics and the founder and the leading light of the monster raving loony party. Uh, when I think of that, I think of all the by-elections with Screaming Lodge stood there with his top hat on and his leopard skin jacket, almost like a teddy boy jacket. Uh, to me it's an iconic image. The Monster Avian Looney Party was there to ridicule and show the other parties up for what they really were and boy did they do a good job. Sadly, no longer with us but one piece of iconic clothing is Screaming Lord Such's leopard skin I'm going to say Teddy Boy jacket, I'm probably being a bit unkind to that, certainly with a velvet collar, but what an iconic thing. Not only a singer, but a politician, and somebody that satirised everybody else's shortcomings in the English political world or the British political scene. Uh, it comes with other amazing screaming loads, such artefacts uh, from a vendor at work with him in publicity for the Monstravian Looney Party. Uh, we've got a conservative estimate on that at four to six hundred pounds. So not the dearest of things. And when we talk about getting into the auction world, to the collecting world, to owning something truly iconic, what a great place to start. So Screaming Lord Such joins us for our first ever vinyl auction in October, which finally brings us to, we all like posters, don't we? And band posters, certain bands fetch absolute premium money, but rock and roll didn't just start with the Beatles. Way, way back in the late 50s and early 60s before Elvis Presley had landed in Scotland very briefly before disappearing back off to America. Some of the teen acts in this country set the stall out of what was to come after. People like Marty Wilde, uh, just great, great performers. Ellen Shapiro, of course, the Beatles got their big break on Ellen Shapiro's tour of 1963. But here we have 13 absolutely superb colour, I suppose foyer posters for the theatres of the time, ranging from the Theatre Royal at Nottingham, the wonderful Empire at Liverpool, and covering a five year period there and thereabouts from around 1957 to 1962. In beautiful colour and they're in superb condition. Uh, we've been talking all the staff down at the, uh, the head office of Graham Bud today and looking at them and saying how wonderful they look, properly framed in the right setting rooms. They're an absolute interior designers dream. Uh, they categorise an era, they've got colour, they've got class, they're so British as well. You know, you think about what defines this country as it was. We've gone back to the Beatles playing the Odeon and the ABC, you know, my city, Sheffield. The last time the Beatles played there was two dates at the Gaumont Cinema. And that's just after the reason of us all. So just imagine, guys, these categorise a completely different era of music. They look superb, they're a set, and we have an estimate of between four to 500 pounds. And that, again, is in our October vinyl sale. Last by no means least, we meet the Starman once again. We saw one of the four Simon Bowie albums that we've got in the auction in October earlier on, and wonderful things they are. We've got some fantastic Bowie things in the uh, auction, folks. Can't wait for you to see the cattle, there's some great bits. But this is a bit special. Uh, this is where art me meets music, or music meets art, or is music art, is art music? Who really knows? But <clears throat> here is Bowie very much in his Aladdin Sane, not Ziggy Stardust phase, uh, done by the noted artist Pure Evil. Fantastic piece. Um, so much so that our head of art, Kevin Turton, was willing to actually fight me with fists in the car park outside to get this in the art auction, which is up and coming. But finders keepers, I suppose, in that respect, it's come from the same vendor. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, We've put, I believe, a valuation of about 14 to 1600 pounds on this. Um, we think it'll fly a lot further, and again, what a wonderful thing. You know, we talk about investments, we constantly look at how we get people into collecting. Why do you collect? Where do you start collecting? You know, collecting's part of me for passion, but also investment's never a bad thing. Uh, and Pure Evil is an artist, it's already there, not on the up. It can only even get better. So it's your chance if you're a Bowie fan or a Pure Evil fan, or even better if you're both, to actually in the October auction <clears throat> bid for and buy Bowie as a lad insane by Pure Evil. Can't wait for you to see the catalogue, folks.